opportunity to formally welcome um, <clears throat> the Minister to the United States. It's a great pleasure to Thank have you here again. Thank you so much, Mr. Yes. Uh, Dr. Perry, I wonder if we could ask you, we understand some decisions have been made on, on the movement of U.S. troops in Saudi Arabia for their protection. I wonder if you might give us some details on that. <clears throat> I will answer that question. It's the second question, but let me see, first of all, if there are any Ch uh, Chilean press here or any questions about U.S.-Chile relations. So I'll take that question first and then come to Mr. Aldringer's second. Any uh, representatives here from the Chilean press? All right. <clears throat> uh, I had a meeting this morning with the uh, about, uh, I guess, 18 or 20 senior senators, giving them a briefing and, uh, and then engaging in a discussion with them about the actions that we need to take under what I call the Force Protection Initiative. This is an initiative to provide adequate protection for our forces in the face of what I consider to be a threat of weapons of mass destruction, a terrorist, uh, weapons of mass destruction in the hands of terrorists. I want to define what I mean by that term. I'm talking about the, because for years we have devised our force protection in response to the last threat or the last attack. And yet we see more significant attacks that are possible and we think even in plan. And therefore we want to get ahead of them and plan ahead. And so this force protection initiative, first of all, identifies that as a potential threat to our forces, particularly in our central command and in several of our countries in the European command, Bosnia and Turkey, for example. And in those areas, then, we have to be prepared for a chemical weapon attack, a biological weapon attack, uh, bombs even bigger than 3,000 pound, uh, bombs in the 10 to 20,000 pound category, mortar attacks. Now, we cannot deal with those attacks adequately just by moving fences and just by putting more mylar on glass. We have to make some fundamental changes, some drastic changes and the way we configure and deploy our forces. So I have established here in the Pentagon this Force Protection Initiative. It is looking at very fundamental questions. One of them is, to get to your question now, uh, specifically, we are looking at what is involved in reconfiguring, redeploying the basing of our forces in Saudi Arabia so that they can be uh, more readily protected. A fundamental aspect of that will be uh, wherever it is feasible, moving out of urban areas, because it's fundamentally difficult to try to protect against those kind of attacks within an urban area. I have directed General P uh, some weeks ago to give me a plan for doing that. Uh, as of two days ago, we received the first phase of that, which is this concept of how to do it. Uh, we are now working within the building, with the Central Command, with the Saudis, and with uh, the Congress. Uh, and we're putting the details of this plan together. When we have it ready, and it will be in the relatively near future, uh, then we will be ready to make the decision. I'm saying we do not have the decision yet about specifically what to do, uh, but we will have a decision on that in a relatively short time, and the objective is to get the necessary reconfiguration done this summer yet. We're not talking about a, a five years from now, a year from now, but something in the relatively near future. Do you have any numbers on any percentage of troops that you expect to be moved? Can you hold on just a second, please? <clears throat> Thank you. Thank uh, you. We're, we're looking at all of the forces which are involved in the uh, operational mission, the uh, Operation Southern Watch, the deterrence mission that's going on there. All of them are considered as possible candidates for this move, and that amounts to three or 4,000. I'm not committing at this time that all of them will be moved. We'll have to make a, 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 a balance between the ability to do the force, mi uh, the mission adequately and the desire to get more force protection. We will also uh, have to look at those forces, those personnel now in Saudi Arabia, in the capital, in Riyadh in particular, who are involved in other missions, the uh, support for the Saudi National Guard, the, the, uh, uh, the military training mission. 
and those, it's much more difficult to do the mission if we, if we were to move them out of Riyadh. So we have to make some, may have to make some different way of getting force protection for them. Uh, other than Secretary, contingency you... planning, other than contingency, do you have any firm, firm indications that there might be plans of a biological, chemical, or nuclear attack against you as troops? Uh, Charlie, I don't want to talk about the specifics of any threat. I will say, though, that every week I get a stack of intelligence reports that high just dealing with details of possible threats. And we have to take each one of them seriously. In those threats, uh, among those stacks, there are discussions of chemical and biological mortar attacks, big bombs, all of them. A lot of that information is misinformation. Some of it is disinformation. People deliberately trying to harass us and confuse us. And it takes a very fine judgment to be able to pick out which of the threats are real. But among that information, yes, there is such, inf there is such detail. So uh, yes, Mark. In conclusion, sir, what's your, what's your overall <coughs> threat assessment? As I meant to imply by my earlier comments, uh, we believe, I believe we have to get ahead of the threat, threat assessment. That is, we understand that the threats I've described to you, chemical, biological, very large bo tr truck bombs, is feasible. We also un understand that the uh, terrorists are trying to drive us out of Saudi Arabia, are capable of doing those. Therefore, uh, in, in, in the basis of those two judgments, we are uh, modeling our force protection initiatives on the assumption that such attacks will occur. Now, this is, some people will say this is worst case planning, but I believe we have to be prepared for more attacks on our forces, not just in Saudi Arabia, but all over the Gulf region, whether it's Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Qatar, Bahrain, each of those we have some information which suggests that it may be uh, specific threats to us in those countries. So we are going to prepare broadly across the board, and we're going to prepare for a very intense threat. It will have, it will be costly. That's why I met, one of the reasons I met with the senators this morning was to alert them to the direction that our planning was going, and that it was going to require substantial support from the Congress. It was going to require uh, both policy and financial support. And I wanted to give them an, an advance warning of that. I wanted to get their, their feedback, their criticism on the plans that we were making, because we will need their support when, when we have to implement them. Therefore, I wanted to involve them in the, in the, in the early stages of planning. Senator Thank Secretary. you, Mr. Secretary. Ladies and gentlemen, going this way, please. Thank you. Thank you.